Okay, it didn't bleep. But we record. <laughs> <laughs> so this is it's Nicholas. Worse. Worse <laughs> <laughs> so this is Nicholas, and I, I, I'm sat with Ben, and we're in UCL, and um, Ben is going to tell me a little bit about how uh, he uses a screen reader. And um, as an example task, uh, we're just going to launch Mew. So I've got the camera on the keyboard and the screen, and, uh, and uh, hopefully close enough that you can pick up yeah. um, what the screen you're just saying. So, so as a bit of a background, yeah, we're, we're working on Mew, and um, this is uh, this is a standard Windows uh, machine um, uh, that's running a screen reader called NVDA, which is open source. It's actually written in Python, so it's uh, it's fairly oh, appropriate for this. Fantastic. One. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so, yeah. I think seeing as we're working on Mew, how about how about we we run Mew and we'll uh, okay. we'll, we'll see we'll see what it says. So I'll just okay. type. Um, so I've, I've che- I haven't even see I haven't even used autocomplete for you. So I'll press enter. And that was it. So okay. So why is it going? What, 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 why is it sounding? What's going on there? So so that was that was talking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't actually sound that fast to me. That sounds just a, a little bit faster than uh, human speech. Really? Wow. Yeah. So that just sounds just, just probably like anecdotally probably sort of less than twenty percent faster than the, the speed that you're talking at. Then wow. I, I feel to me. Um, although I have been listening to it at that speed since two thousand and five. So that's it, it. Varies a little bit depending on exactly what you're getting it to read. But as an average, that's roughly seven hundred words a minute. <laughs> Um, so I find that's incredibly useful if I'm reading something sort of very dense. So, yes. so I work as a developer, so unfortunately sometimes I have to read documentation. Uh, even more unfortunately, sometimes I have to write it. Yes. Uh, um, but you know, if I'm reading, if I'm reading a spec or, or a, a, an RFC or something like that, yeah. um, it's really useful for stuff like that because I can read it very quickly. But I'm not skim reading it either. I'm, I'm reading absolutely everything. Yeah. Um, you know, so so sighted people can skim read incredibly quickly. This is just as quick, if not quicker, but I'm I'm reading I'm reading word for word what's happening. Yeah. Right. Okay. And the screen reader is reporting the various interactions that are going on. Yeah. So the first thing that it said um, was it, it was announcing where Mu was logging to, um, right. and then it loaded up um, loaded up the, uh, the the GUI for, for Mu, and it's actually it's actually opened a project that I was working on previously. Okay. Um, so this is uh, this is actually uh, uh, this this is quite old now. Actually, I probably need to revisit this activity. I wrote this in a very in a hurry uh, the night before a STEM event about three years or two or three years ago. This yeah. is actually a Python-based treasure hunt using Bluetooth beacons and Raspberry Pis. So uh, I'm rambling now, but we took this out to a school yeah. and uh, we had them uh, walk around the school with pies and. Um, the clues to the treasure hunt would take them to different parts of the school. So as they approached the, uh, uh, the Bluetooth beacon, the Pi would play a sound. Uh. And the sound would lead them to the next clue, which would be a part of their school. Uh. So that was sort of a, a sort of, if you get into coding, this is the kind of stuff you'll be able to do type thing. Okay, cool. So, so shall I, I'll, I'll try and get this to, I'll try and get this to read some, some things to you. Yeah. Um, so let's see if this works. Ah, yeah, so, so, so. So that's just, that's, that's just, that's it, just it counting down the integers that yeah, were on each of the lines. That's on each of the lines. So this is actually something a little bit different now. So so this is, um, I think what's happened is this has remembered something that I was doing before to try yeah. to show it back. So, so let's just get rid of that. I'll yeah. say, I'll write, uh, hello, uh, uh, hello, Nicholas. Hello, Nicholas, how are you? There we go. <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> wow. Wow, uh, but it, it strikes me that uh, Mew appears to be working okay, and that you, you well, you appear to be using it. Um, so, so yeah, it, it, it does seem to be working okay, which is which is interesting actually, because the, the whole bug that I wanted to demo to you just just off the top of my head when I was, I was playing with with those those integers there, yes. that was actually quite a good way to demo the bug. Um, it didn't actually seem to be surfacing it. So. Oh, so <laughs> it, 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 could it be that there's no book anymore and the, the latest oh, build? I don't know. Optimistic, any Nicholas. <laughs> I'm always, an, I'm always an optimist. <laughs> always an optimist. So it could be, but I think, I think that's definitely something to, to explore. Um, okay. But it's a good start. So yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, reading, it's reading it to me, and uh, 
as I say, this is this is a nice open source option for Windows. So so as a bit of background, the, yeah. the commercial screen readers are, are sort of really really expensive. You're looking at sort of six hundred pounds minimum. Wow. Um, yeah. So, so I remember we got our first computer in I think it was 1998, and yeah. it was a thousand pounds for the computer plus another thousand pounds to make it talk. Oh my god. Yeah. So so the example I like to give now is that you can purchase you know, a fire tablet from Amazon, for example, for £50. Yes. And I'm not saying that that's going to be the best experience ever, because yeah. it, it, it won't be. Um, but fundamentally, it, you know, it's got a free screen reader built in, so £2,000 versus 50 Yes. So we're not, we're not there yet, but yeah. it's coming down a long, long way. Yeah. And the in terms of the operating systems, so um, what was the name of the screen reader that, that you're using on Windows? This is um, Windows 10, yeah, isn't it? This, this is Windows 10. So, so any, any sort of modern version of Windows, so uh, seven upwards. Seven upwards. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can get an older version for XP. So this is using NVDA, which is non-visual desktop access. Right. Okay. Um, and if you just Google that, Google you'll that, be able to find that. Okay. Um, on Linux, you've got uh, options or- Orca. like Orca. Yeah. That's for the GUI. Or if you're just uh, if you're sticking to a terminal, you can use something like SpeakUp. Yeah. Um, although obviously not not applicable for for me. Um, and OS ten. You've got VoiceOver. Um, right. So that's that's really easy. It's literally just press command. F5, it'll start talking to you. Okay, okay. And um, on the Raspberry Pi, it's is Orca applicable, or so, what's the story in Raspberry Pi? So it's, it's a bit tricky on the Pi. We, we haven't really managed to get it working. I know some people that have managed to get it working with some alternate desktops. I know that you can run Mate, uh, and if you're running Mate, you can use Orca. Yep. But for some reason, there's some kind of conflict with the with the sort of onboard audio that uh, that makes it sort of stutter. So the only way that people have managed to get speech working in the GUI is by using an external audio device. Right. Some some sort okay. of very strange things of that. You can you can get it working if if all, if all you want to do is sort of use the command line. It's perfectly fine. You can you can uh, you know you can just install something like Stretch and then just install Speak Up and it, it yep. works fairly well. But one of the things that I'm sort of, sort of keen to try and rectify is you know the, the out of the box experience because when yes. I when I talk about you know installing Mate installing a, a separate sound card yes. you know this very, is beyond very, the control yeah. of uh, beyond the skill of most people beginning yeah. the Raspberry Pi yeah so what I'm keen to try and think about is you know when you take this out of the box how how do you get this to work unfortunately you can't really do that at the moment right okay and is that a problem with Pixel or, you know the the the, the uh, because that's that's the um, it's it's not a window manager. It's the no, kind of the, the theme for whatever the window yeah, manager is that they the use. Lathe, yeah. yeah, hard hard to say really. I right. mean, I've, I've played I've played with Orca a couple of times under Pixel, and I've I've just found that it, it seems to stutter, but it doesn't seem to be a performance issue. Right. Like you can you know you can you can have a sort of very bare desktop running, and it will still stutter. Yeah. And you can load up loads of different things to, to stress. To stress the device, yeah. and it won't get any worse. Right. So, so you'd expect you'd expect the performance issues to scale yeah. you know, in relation to the amount of CPU you do or do not have or, or RAM. Yeah, it's, it's it's a tricky one. Right. It, it's never worked really. So um, the so the interesting thing, and I'm asking lots of daft, silly questions now because I'm, we're videoing this and. Um, it, it, just for those people who are interested, I'm trying to work out. Well, what would what might they be be asking? So, the the impression I get is that the the different screen readers um, for the different operating systems all work differently. Yeah. Uh, and you're, you're you're in a sense you're learning that operating system's accessibility tools. Yeah. And then Qt, the widget framework that I'm using, is. Um, in a platform specific way exposing Mew to those screen readers yeah. such that they understand there are whatever 10 buttons across the top there is a text area here the, the scintilla area and you're, you're, you're doing this you, you've moved back one word or you've moved, moved up a line or something like that um, is that a general kind of um, a good thumbnail sketch yeah. of what, what, what's going on here yeah yeah so that makes sense so, so there are sort of platform specific accessibility eyes, uh, APIs and you know QT obviously is Abstracts the, uh, yes. obviously abstracts, abstracts those out a little bit, so so you don't have to worry them because I guess that's the whole thing about cross-platform development, right? Yeah. Um, and, and then so so if if your application abides by these specs, yeah, then 
it's then up to the screen reader. You, you've done your job as, as a developer then. It's up yeah. to the screen reader to then say, okay, right, I'm going to query these APIs, slurp all of this information in, and then I will present it in a way that you know the design team for the specific screen reader have decided is optimum for, yeah. for our users. Okay. Um, so... Um, can we just write a little bit of Python, just a, a, yeah. a, a very simple Python script? Um, it's in microbit mode at the moment, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see if, if you can change mode to maybe Python 3 mode. Okay. Um, so, uh, if I, uh, so if I go to mode... So, print, uh, print hello world or something like that. And then uh, if we run it. So that's what's in. So I think this is where we're sort of in finding some sort of interesting issues now because it's not right. So I didn't realise. There you go. We, you, you can tell that we're doing this live without yes. any. I mean, I mean, it, when we're demoing the software, it's always it's always appropriate for yes. this break, isn't yes. it? So, so that's. All right, so it's, it's working now. So, so yeah, so so, we, so I guess this is this is part of what we're sort of trying to figure out. Right. What works, what doesn't. So, um, so what are you doing so, now? So I'm interacting with the uh, with the toolbar to try and find to try and find the run button. So. Yeah. Oh, so so is I suppose we. So I suppose it's run and then exited again, hasn't it? Uh, yes. So so what's happened is that uh, as a sighted person, I see a new um, panel appear at the bottom of the new window, okay. and in that is the standard out and standard in for the um, process. So I just see hello world, and then the three chevrons that tell me I'm now in an interactive Python. Um, uh, sort of environment, which is what the Raspberry Pi Foundation asked me to do, is when a script finishes, to drop me into Python in the context of that script, so right. I can interrogate variables or you know objects that might be there. Yeah, so I've, I've just I've just found that actually, so it is working, and I think I think one ah, of the good. things one of the things that I can read that it's it's had hello world, and I've got greater than uh, underneath it. So I think one of the one of the things that will be interesting throughout this journey is sort of figuring out. The UX of this, so yeah. so so that's a, an example of a feature that is sort of technically completely accessible. As in, I can I can run my code and I can navigate to the the new window where yeah. I can see its output. But if we take a simple example, I didn't know that anything had happened. So how do I, as a begin, you know, I know ah. I know now that something's happened because I know what the intended behaviour is. But as a beginning user, you know, for somebody who's done it as, as their sort of first yeah. thing, how how do we surface the fact that that has happened? And I'm not saying I have an answer to that, but that, those are sort of some of the interesting challenges that I think we're going to have to okay. think about. So, so the my um, I'm a lazy developer hat has been put on my head now, and uh, in, in that situation, the first thing I do is ask myself, well, what what's the convention here? What's what do other people do to solve this problem? And if there is a convention. Um, it's something that our users potentially will know about because it is a convention. You know, when I open up a new window or a new thing occurs in my browser or Word or whatever piece of software I'm using, um, it is, is the, uh, yeah, what happens there and how do I make Mew do that thing? Is that a good approach yeah, to take? Yeah, I think that's sensible. So I think in this instance, what, what so, so obviously you have the concept of focus. You know, if, yeah. if you look at a website where you're sort of tabbing through things, you know, a link or a button or, or some yeah. kind of... Uh, actionable element will receive focus. So, so I would say probably change focus to the newly spawned window. I thought I did that. Um, mm. So, so it is now, but that's only because I've you've told it to told it to. So, I, believe, you... I mean, that's probably something we need to try and. Okay, and do you know how to close that? Um, is that obvious? No. Uh, I think I can probably. Uh, so, I found a close button. Oh, and ah, so that's that's interesting. So, so, uh, so, so I'm finding what I believe is a close button, but I'm not sure that it's working. Okay, so the, the run button so. visually turns into a stop button. 
Okay. So you should just be able to toggle run, stop, run, stop, run, stop. Uh, okay. So it's in the it's in the toolbar now. Yeah. So stop. Uh, and, right. and, so okay. so um, I was finding a close button next to a button called float. Okay. Well, there is no button called float. Ah, oh, so that's interesting. Um, and there is <laughs> there is no close button. Um, uh, mm. Hmm. Okay, so this is interesting. So, so you're finding things that aren't visually uh, accessible. Um, I wonder what it. Does. Let's try it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wonder what it does. So, if we, so let's just try this first problem. When you click run, yeah. does the focus change? Um, so. We probably want to come up with some hotkeys for this. Ah, so so it looks like actually, so it looks like it has changed. Yeah. But what's what's happened is, I suppose it's a yeah. So this, this is going to be tricky. So I suppose there's a bit of a race condition here where what's happened is because it's such a small program. Yeah. It's it's executed. You know, hello world has been printed so quickly. Yeah. It receives focus, so so so. For example, if I sort of arrow up and down, I'm just getting greater and greater. Ones, but I can I can I can read the hello world. So so I'm using a specific sort of screen reader hotkey to, re to yeah. review to review my code, which I think is a sensible way of, of reviewing the output. Okay. Um, but yeah, so it didn't it doesn't read the the code to you, and I think I think. That's going to be a, a sort of decision we're going to have to come to at some point right. about where we want to, it, how, how we want to do that. Is there some way that I can tell or signal to a screen reader in these sorts of situations something's going on here um, that you might have missed? Uh, I'm, I, I, you can tell I'm complete newbie at this because I'm, 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 not, I'm not even sure I'm asking the right question. So, I mean, you can do, you can do something on, on, you know, in, in the web world, you'll have something like ARIA, A R I A. Yes. Um, so you can yeah. sort of send, you know, you can send sort of alerts to it to get it to speak things. You can do sort of ARIA polite, which is where it will sort of finish saying what it's currently saying, then say something to you, or you can do sort of strict where it will interrupt. But yeah. traditionally on on desktop, I find that the the sort of accepted model is just to do everything that you can in terms of sort of making properly labelled elements and making sure that everything complies with the various APIs that you're using. Yeah. And then it's up to the screen readers to do that. So there are there are ways that you can sort of explicitly say to the screen reader, speak this. But I so, so um, for anyone who cares, there's actually a Python package called uh, Accessible Output Two, which yeah. lets you controls or screen readers, which is useful for you get what's called windowless applications yeah. um, that that don't have any windows. So I use a Spotify client that uh, uh -huh. that doesn't have any windows, so I can yeah. control it from from any application that I'm using. Yeah, because um, I don't need a GUI. Yeah, um, so that's useful for stuff like that. But I would I would say that that's a strange way to do it in an application. You could, I, I feel like sort of desktop applications should be telling a screen reader what to speak, as in these but this this is the label for this button. Yeah. But not actually telling it to speak. Yes. The 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 uh, the place where a, an application should stop, I would say, is you know move focus to things correctly, you know yes. draw windows correctly, and then once you've done that, the screen reader can have some knowledge that says, okay, I have decided that I will speak every time a new window shows. Yeah, like that. I think that's the that's yeah. the line. Well, it's, it's the screen reader that's actually driving the application is the thing to remember here, rather yeah. than the application driving the screen reader. Yeah. And then this is something for me to remember as a sighted person is because I just don't, <laughs> I don't have that um, that uh, skill set or, or habitual usage or or, or or context to understand what's um, going on. Now, each of the buttons should have a um, hotkey. So I think if you press F five. Um, which is the yeah yeah there we go. yeah which uh, so one of the things I have to do in the documentation from you is is actually provide a list of all the hotkeys that I've uh, I've provided for each of the buttons uh, and also all the hotkeys that you can use with Q Scintilla as well 
Um, so I have a question for you now, which relates to a bug that I was, or well, a new feature I was implementing this morning. Um, and that is, I was asked to um, have a feature where, with highlighted text, um, I could press a hotkey, Control K in this case, and that would comment it all out. And then I could press Control K again, and the comment, the 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 the, the hash sign would be removed, and they would be uncommented. That's quite useful. Yeah. Uh, yes, you know, it's great for for debugging because you can mm. uh, you can comment out a whole thing that you know doesn't work, and then just gradually comment in lines so you can find out where 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 the things um, not working. Um, how how I mean highlighting is. Uh, uh, well, it's explicitly a, a visual sort of thing. How how would that work um, here? Okay, I reckon that'll be fine. Because I mean, you're just going to use your, your sort of shift keys. So, so so if we did, I mean, obviously this isn't valid code at all. Yeah. So so we can just you just select like. So that. you've got the, the there's predefined hotkeys for yeah, selecting yeah. the thing, and like, those okay. are sort of OS specific, yeah, like screen reader specific. So in this case, right. it's just shift and the arrows. So you just do that, and yeah. then. Control K. It's not in master yet, is it? No, it's not. Well, uh, yes, it is in master. If you hit pull, uh, oh, right, but it was this morning. It, no, I, yeah, it was uh, about eleven o'clock. Oh, I committed. Right, yes. so. <laughs> it, that, that's hot off the presses. Yes, um, and somebody's already found a bug in it as oh. well. <laughs> a pep eight bug, actually. Um, <laughs> so uh, apparently, um, well, I know this anyway. But uh, with comments, you're supposed to put a hash and then a space. Uh, and I, I just put, appended a hash to the front of every, uh, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's an easy thing to fix, but, um, I've started the video again, Ben, sorry, you were saying about the, the, the rules of thumb. Yeah, so, so we probably, you know, if you were, if you were thinking about, uh, making a new button, a button that opens a new document, you know, you'd probably call that new, um, you wouldn't call it new button, press enter to start this new document. That's, that's yeah. a little bit too early. But I, I think, so, so we can come up with some, some guidelines around that, and there are probably some existing ones that we can see. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, so with the labels, when I've created the labels, I was using my experience as a teacher yeah. um, and thinking, well, this needs to be for a reading age of 11. I need to explain what this thing does in about five words because... <laughs> Um, <laughs> quite a good way of doing it, yeah. Um, you, you, you know, they, they, you, you've not got much more because the kid, um, if they're a 10 or 11 year old in a classroom, in a noisy classroom, they need to get this information as quickly as possible. And if you if you write them an essay, um, they're, they're just going to give up and put their hand up and go, you know, miss or sir, yeah. <laughs> you know, how do I do blah. Yeah. Um, no, no, I, th I, think, I think our, our labels are good. But I, th I think I think your labels are good, rather. That's probably quite a good way of looking at it. Right. But I think I think the the thing that we'll sort of really need to figure out is what kind of testing people do. Because yes. I mean, again, we, like, you know, I I sort of technically sit in a test discipline at work, so yes. I need yes. to advocate this. Yes. Um, but equally, we. Just to be clear, you're a test engineer at the BBC, and you work yeah, on the iPlayer. So I work on the iPlayer app. Yeah. So I do sort of I do well. Uh, Sort of, sort of development to to aid the sort of test discipline. So I'll do sort of automation tooling, and then I'll do a bit of development in the yeah. code base as well. So that's that's needs require. Um, and, and 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 iPlayer is is used by millions of people around the UK and all over the world to watch BBC programmes. I'm just saying this so that people who are unfamiliar yeah, with iPlayer, yeah, 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 and it, so it, it's basically like BBC's version of Netflix. Yeah. Really, um, it's a good way to think of it. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, we, we need to sort of think about, okay, so, so I'm, I'm a developer that's made a UI change. You know, I, I care about accessibility, but I probably don't know a huge amount about it. You know, how, how do I, how, A, how do I sort of test to see that my changes haven't broken anything? You know, yeah. what, is, what are the steps that I need to do to, yeah. to do that? And how do we define a past test? Yes. Um, and I think that's something that you're going to have to do at the UI level. This isn't going to be a unit test, yes. I don't feel. Um, and then B, as someone such as yourself who is saying, okay, I've, I've just had a PR, I'm, I'm ready to merge this. How, how do I know? Verify, this? yeah. Yeah, how, how do I verify this testing? Yes. And I think that's... That sounds boring, but I think that's going to be a lot of sort of defining processes and stuff yes. like that.
Um, so what do you imagine this, this might look like then? Um, maybe maybe we, we say you... Okay, we... I mean, we so, so, so my question is actually really, what are the best practices currently for, for this sort of thing? Well, that's the problem, because I mean, realistically, to, to test this properly, you're going to have to have a Linux setup, a Windows setup, and a Mac OS setup. Yes. And, and that's assuming that we don't get the Pi working. Okay, and, <laughs> and, and, and is, are you talking about using, you know, somebody sat using the computer, or are there tools that can automate the, the running of, th- of this? I think at this stage it's going to have to be manual. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, because this chimes in with something that I, you, you'll see in the issues. I've put something on there which is a release checklist, um, and um, there's nothing there. Although I have a list in my notebook of things that need to be done before a release, but that includes manual testing. Um, I remember when I worked at the Guardian, Gwyn, who was the um, test engineer in my team, he had a whole checklist of specific tasks and paths through um, the website in this case, but it could be activities in Mew that he would walk through.